Hey, this is Joe, Great Bench Electronics. Welcome and welcome back. Today, I'm starting a new tube amp project. I have right here a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. This is one of the most popular tube amps of all time. Unfortunately, this one has an issue. So instead of fixing that, we're actually gonna take this bad boy apart and turn it into a Dumble Overdrive Special. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. All right, this week, we're just going to examine the amp as it currently sits. We'll talk a little bit about the problem it has. We'll make sure all the parts are necessary, everything is ready to go for the conversion. Next week, we'll be assembling one of these beautiful PCBs from Luigi Retro Custom. This is their HDR to ODS. I will put a link for the build docs in the description if you wanna check it out ahead of time. If this project sounds interesting to you, I'd appreciate you subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate you hitting the like button. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. I already said in the intro, this is one of the most popular tube amps of all time. It's a fantastic amp. 40 watts, loud enough for decent sized gigs, but you can turn it down to still get overdriven enough for smaller stuff. It's really a great amp. Unfortunately, this one has a problem. I actually haven't tested it out because it doesn't matter, but the allegedly the channel switch doesn't work, so it only stays in the clean mode. You can't switch to the overdrive channel. I picked this up from the guitar show that just passed this weekend. I got it for a really good deal because of the problem, knowing that eventually I would be just pulling all the guts out anyway. So let's go ahead and crack it open. These amps are pretty easy to work on because the chassis is mounted vertically. So just six screws here to get into the, into the uh, chassis here. All right, so here's the inside of a Hot Rod Deluxe. If you watch tube amp repair channels or anything like that, you've probably seen the inside of one of these. Like I said, they're very popular. This main circuit board has to come out the secondary board also for the tubes is gonna come out. The output jacks we're gonna use, fuse, power cable's good, switches, lamp, all that's gonna stay in place. And then the new PCB is gonna fit right in here using the original screw mounting positions like that. This amp already has been modified a little bit. You can see the typical spots, the screen resistors here have given some heat to the PCB and discolored it. The, uh, the person who did the repair here did a good thing, which is elevating the uh, screen resistors here off the board. A couple caps here have been replaced. These Illinois capacitor caps are notorious for leaking and um, going bad really quickly. Again, problems we're not gonna have to deal with because we're swapping all of this crap out. Of course, we're interested in the iron, the tubes, all these tubes should be good. The chassis, of course, the knobs, hopefully we will repurpose. Some of the faceplate here will have to be redrilled like these buttons on the top here that are square. Those will need to be switched out or drilled out, I should say, for toggle switches, round toggle switches. Other than that, it's not much to see. It's just a tube amp, pretty simple, even compared to some of the pedals we look at. So let's get right on started with the disassembly process. Uh, for some reason, this amp didn't have a reverb tank. Uh, the Hot Rod Deluxe definitely has reverb, and I, it looks like the wires are down here. I'm not sure why it's missing, but it is. It doesn't matter to me because the Overdrive Special doesn't have reverb, so that was coming out anyway. So yeah, let's go ahead, get started, taking apart. Also, I should say at this point, the normal disclaimer, which is tube amps have very high voltages inside. I've already confirmed with a multimeter and let it drain overnight with a drain lead here to make sure that there's absolutely no voltage inside this amplifier. So I have no problem coming in here and touching things because I guaranteed for myself that it is all good to go. But if you are gonna be working inside your tube amplifier, you should make sure to drain the capacitors that can hold onto a charge high enough to seriously hurt you or kill you and confirm with a multimeter that the amp is discharged and obviously unplug it from wall power. And of course, if you do so, you're working at your own risk. This isn't an instructional video. Please don't sue me. Thank you. All right, so we got the speaker pulled out. This is a 12 inch speaker. 
It's marked there with a label that probably means more to other people than it does to me. The little tag here is marked 67, let's look for an EIA code, 121042. I don't know if that's right, 037. 037 might be 617. So that'd be sixth week of 2017 maybe. And then eight ohm. Seems a little bit dusty, but besides for that, the cone seems to move freely. I don't feel any scraping. It's nice and springy, so this speaker should do fine. We'll try and clean up the uh, some of the dust here a little bit, but not too bad. Enclosure needs a little vacuum out, a little bit of cobwebs as to be expected. And as per usual, pulling the chassis out of here, it's almost impossible to not mess up the foil shielding on the sides here because the ch chassis just sort of scrapes it out as it comes out. I usually just peel this off. I've never played or, or repaired or worked on a Hot Rod Deluxe that this tape really made that big of a difference. So I usually just pull that out. Got the speaker back inside the cabinet here just for safekeeping. Now's a good time just to inspect, make sure you don't see any damage to the cabinet that needs to be addressed. This one looks pretty good. Cleaned up the cobwebs a little bit. Got a little flap of uh, Tolex here that needs to be reclued down, but that's no big deal. Now's also a good time to make sure that all your hardware that essentially stays part of the cabinet are uh, well fastened down. So that includes the screws here holding on the handle. Come in here and make sure these are nice and tight. This is something worthwhile to check on your amps at home because it would obviously be really bad if your handle pulled out of your cabinet while you were carrying it. Aside from the obvious damage that could happen to the amplifier, if it falls on your foot, that's a really bad day. So, so yeah, we can check here the screws holding in the baffle. Make sure these are nice and tight. If it feels like it's just spinning, it's probably the nut on the inside that's spinning. If it's not like T-nuts, these uh, nuts have, they're caps nuts, so they're actually biting into the wood. So I can feel them tightening down, which is good. All right, so we are done now with the furniture for pretty much until the end when we're ready to assemble the amp back together. So we're gonna put this aside and we'll move on to the chassis. All right, time to start taking the chassis apart here. We gotta remove pretty much everything except the transformers here. Knobs all gotta come off, hardware's coming off. Switches can stay in probably, but other than that, we're gonna gut this thing out. So let's get started on that.
All right, got the chassis all gutted out now. Got our transformer windings here. All looks to be in good order, good shape. So like I said, the problem with this amplifier was channel switching, but we saw that there was also work done to the power supply and around the output tubes. I can see here there's some discoloration around the right octal tube here, or output tube, the 606, that there is some discoloration around pin one here, which indicates probably some arcing in the tube. And that would definitely cause the, uh, the plastic on these belt and sockets to get scorched a little bit. Doesn't seem, I don't see any major damage to it, so seems fine. I'm also going to try and remove these tube sockets from the PCB here. Uh, one, because their belt and sockets are nice tube sockets, it'd be nice to have them. And two, because of a cool little PCB from Luigi that I want to use, and they require the PCB pin uh, octal sockets, which I forgot to order. So I'm going to try and pull those out. Here is the main board from the amplifier, and you can see some of the work that was done here around those screen resistors. Uh, looks like the traces were actually damaged, so the repair person had to come in here and fix some of that. Otherwise, it looks like it's pretty decent work. Unfortunately, none of it's going to matter now, but there's that. As far as salvage components on here, there's not a lot to take. Uh, the the uh, filter capacitors are junk. The pots are sort of a proprietary thing with these brackets and you could pull these out, but it'd be a lot of work. The channel switch is probably bad. That's probably the issue. I feel like I've seen hot rods have the same channel switching issue and it was actually the switch. So that is not uh, something I really would bother getting out. Maybe you could make an argument for the relays pulling those out. Cause that is, you know, relays tend to be at least a couple bucks when you buy them new. Other than that, there's not really anything special here. It's all just basic jelly bean parts. So, And then if you want a sneak peek on how the amplifier is going to look with the Luigi Retro Custom PCB, it is designed specifically to mount to the same screw holes that the original board did. And so this is just going to drop in there and look just like that. It's going to be pretty awesome. Like I said, next week we're going to be assembling this PCB. Today we're just getting ready. We do also have a couple uh, modifications to make the screw holes to the, uh, the top here. These square holes for uh, some of the slots here need to be widened out for toggle switches. So let's get started on all that stuff. All right, so as I delve deeper and deeper into this, I think that this is a really old Hot Rod Deluxe. I thought based on the speaker that it was a 2017, but I think I read that code wrong because I'm seeing like on the inspection sticker for the board here, the sticker on the board here, this is marked 0803, like August of 2003, coming up on almost 20 years. And some other code I saw too, maybe on one of the pots or something, also looked like 2000, oh, the uh, code on the transformer also indicated 2003. And I'm just seeing some differences, like the jacks, the build notes for this project say the jacks need to be opened up for the isolated jacks, but the ones that are recommended on the, um, the bill of materials fit just fine, even a little bit loose. But the build doesn't say anything about how, having to open up the potentiometer holes, but those were too small. Those were like 5 16 and they need to be 3 8 for for the potentiometers that I ordered. So. I'm seeing a handful of differences. Also, the holes for the noble tubes, the preamp tubes, those are supposed to be smaller because you're supposed to be able to just drill holes to bring in the, uh, the bottom mount sockets and just melt them directly. But these holes are too big that it's not wide enough. Luckily, I have these adapters. I forget where I got these from. It's probably Tube Depot or some, some you know, antique electronic supply, one of those. And it's basically a noble to octal little bracket here. And although, unfortunately, they don't match any of the holes that are already put in the chassis here, I can still mount them like this and drill the holes. So they should still work fine. This one I'm gonna have to raise up on little standoffs just cause there's some humps inside the chassis here. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's little humps inside there that are not letting this sit flush. But if I stand it up on these standoffs, like so inside the chassis, then it won't interfere with the humps. I think we're gonna have to do that. Otherwise, everything looks the same and seems to be working fine. So we'll see if we run into other snags as we go.
All right, I think I'm gonna wrap the video here. Got the cabinet sorted out, got the chassis here emptied out, ready to go. Drilled out all the holes we need to, installed those Octal to Novel adapters I talked about. Next week's video, we'll be assembling the PCB here. I hope you will join me for that. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and feel free to subscribe if you wanna catch more of my videos. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. See you next week.